gotta go to school, ma'am. Good morning, guys. I'm trying to get you guys situated so that you don't fall. Good morning. I'm running a little late this morning because I thought I would be grown to stay up all night last night. Welcome to the Fearless Morning Show. We are having confessions and conversations about your everyday life. My name is Yamitra Jojo Waddell, the only live past crazy special. So what better place to be than here with me? Good morning, everybody. I'm going to take it with you to refresh it later. I don't have any gel, so... Water, water on top of that with your finger. Be just fine. Mm -hmm. Good morning, everybody. I'm a few minutes late this morning. I try. I stayed up really late. Rosie did too. Rosie stayed up late as well. But for a stupid quiz. I know it was not. Which a, was a waste of time. Yes, I know how you feel. Great morning, Miss Valerie. Rosie has a concert tonight, so she's excited about that, right, Rosie? She'd rather be asleep. She just woke up. So, all right, guys, since I was running late, I'm going to get right into the show today. Hope you guys had a great weekend. I hope you're ready to get this Monday started. It's going to be a great, great day. Rosie, when you get out, please make sure you shut the trunk, okay? Mm hmm Okay. It's going to be an amazing Monday. I think I'm going to need all the coffee I can handle this morning. It's just not that much. Yeah, and I can't handle a lot because it may, I have rosacea, so it makes my face itch and my eyes burn. So there would not be a lot of that this morning. But I, tea. No, I can't have the I tea hurts my stomach. Tea. Yeah. So, uh, excuse me. So if you guys missed the show on Friday, please make sure you go and check it out. And uh, if you shared it, I greatly appreciate you for sharing because sharing is caring and i greatly appreciate you taking time out to be here for the fearless morning show bright and early at 7 15 monday through fridays if your friends and family don't have facebook don't forget to send them over to the youtube channel we have over 300 shows over there and so you can binge watch all the fearless morning shows they are by topic and by title so you can pick whatever you like so okay. today's fearless start of the day is we're going to talk about two things. First, we're going to talk about uh, the principle of priority. And the principle of priority says, A, is that you have to know the difference between urgent and important. Once you know the difference between urgent and important, then two, uh, B, is you work, you must do what's important first. Because a lot of times we have... If you like me, you have so many things going on and you have no idea where to start first. And so half the time, this is the procrastinated me. If I have no idea what I'm going to start first, <laughs> she just don't start. I just don't start. And then I listen to music and then I decide to have a full blown concert in my house and I dance through every room in my socks, sliding. And then I force Rosie and Courtney to sing with me. And the music just gets louder and louder and louder. And before you know it, we have wasted three hours listening and singing to music. And I've done nothing. I've done nothing of what I need to do. I'm going to procrastinate to my heart. So, principle of priority says, A, that you have to know the difference between urgent and important. Love Have a great day. Be peaceful. Okay. And all your stuff is on my side, I think. So, oh, that looks like that felt good. <laughs> oh, yeah, stretch that out, girl. Oh, jeez. Oh, <laughs> so that's the principle of priority. First, know the difference between what's urgent and what's important. And two, you must do what is important first. Don't be like me and don't do anything because you start singing and dancing and then you don't do any of it so excuse me i don't know why i know why i'm yawning because i was up to 12 30. miss margaret said good morning you guys good morning. they said good morning so that's the principle of priority you got to know that first well you have to know that 
here's the other thought. So they kind of go hand in hand. Fear doesn't allow you to think clearly. So the principle of priority is never going, you're never going to implement that because fear is not going to allow you to think about anything that's urgent or important. When you are in a constant state of fear or a constant state of stress, then your thought process is totally different as if you were relaxed or if you were free to think the thoughts that you were thinking. Right, first things first. Don't forget your don't forget your dress. You're gonna have to come to the other side and get it. The fear fear doesn't allow you to think clearly. So um, you guys know I'm the only live past crazy specialist, so what better place to be than here with me? And so when I lived in fear constantly for those two you know what? And here's the thing, just because you leave a situation does not mean the situation has left you if you're not handling or working through that, okay? Uh, when I first left my abuser, I, well, even when I, be, when I was with him, can I have a bye-bye kissy? You got everything, I think. No, I didn't. What'd you forget? No, oh, your jackets. <laughs> when I left, or before I left, it was a constant state of fear all the time and the only thing that I could think about on a regular basis give me kissing Rosie come on I'm trying not to vomit bye I love you be peaceful have a great day I'll see you this evening where am I coming all right right so if you don't, enjoy, so when I, I lived in a constant state of fear and I could not, fear doesn't allow you to think clearly. I was always afraid. I was all, and here's, this is why I tell you guys to breathe all the time. When I was living in that, I did not breathe. Like I, I held my breath all the time and you don't think that you do, but you do. Like I was always afraid what was going to happen next. You know, where was he going to say, what he was going to do, where the next hit was going to come from. And you don't breathe and when you don't breathe you short circuit your brain and so your brain is in a constant state of panic all the time because it doesn't have the oxygen oxygen that it needs to think properly nerd science i know so when you are fearful or in a constant state of fear you don't think clearly so when i talk about the principle of priority it's not it's hard to apply that when you're in a constant state of fear the principle of priority is two things one know the difference between what is important and what is urgent right and, and it's a when i you know what in my family thank you margaret thinks i'm insane when i tell my children to breathe like when rosie is upset and i know she's about to wind up to ten thousand, i put my hand on her shoulder and i was like breathe and now i don't breathe just breathe because when you're in a state of panic, when you're in a state of fear, you don't breathe. Your mind, you cannot think clearly when you're fearful. You can't think clearly when you are afraid that everything is going to go to hell in a handbasket instantaneously. You just don't think. And even after I left my abuser, in the years that I was living from uh, paycheck to paycheck, and shoot, let us pray, you know, real conversation we, we just getting past that but when you're fearful about it all the time it doesn't allow you to think clearly and when you start breathing when you take time to breathe like literally not breathe till you're gonna hyperventilate but you take a deep breath and you hold it and then you control it going out right you would be surprised how much better your body feels. And I'm a firm believer. And who am I? I'm a firm believer. A lot of illnesses, stress, particularly a lot of illnesses could be deviated if we just breathe. Because we eat so much of our fear. It has nowhere else to manifest itself. If I don't get it out of my body, it shows up in my body. Any doctor will tell you. Fear and stress causes dis-ease in the body. Please take a minute to breathe, y'all. Take a breath. Because when you're fearful, you're not thinking clearly. You're not thinking at all. You're in that, oh my God, let me save my life mode. Not in any other mode. So you can't apply the principle of priority. There's two points to that. Principle of priority says, one, you got no difference between urgent 
and important. And when you're in a fearful state, you're never going to know the difference between urgent and important because you're going to think everything that's urgent is important. And some things are not. And then once you know the difference between what is urgent and what is important, then you work on the things that are important first. Because it could be urgent, but is it important? Like, it could be urgent, but are you going to die? Like, my key is, so my, my reference guide for the children is, are you going to, uh, are you about to, are you going to bleed to death? Or are you going to die if I don't make this decision right now? Like, is it detrimental to your health, that decision? Or do I have a minute to work on something else? And they absolutely hate that because, but it puts things in perspective. So I then know the difference between urgent and important because it may be urgent to you, but is it important to the situation or to what's going on? Yes, thank you, Margaret, the root of all diseases. Yep. And it's because our body was not made for this. Our body was not made to live in stress. We just were not. So we're not made to live that way. So when we eat our fear, when we eat our stress, when we keep it in our body and don't take care of our bodies, then it shows up in other it shows up in your hands. It shows up in your back, in your hip, in your headaches. It shows up. Breathe today. Fear does not allow you to think clearly. And this is Monday. This is motivational Monday. Marvelous Monday. Miraculous Monday. Make it happen Monday. Today, I want you to breathe. Today, I don't want you to be in a constant state of fear so that you can't think. So if you have five minutes today before you go into work, even if you have a good two, I take two minutes. If you got a good two minutes before you go into your job today, take a deep breath. I mean, take a deep breath and hold it like hold it till you can't hold it no more and then control it as you let it out you're gonna feel a little lightheaded if it's your first time but after that you're going to feel better your thoughts will become clearer today know that you can't think clearly in fear be determined today to have a clear thought right study and prove let me tell you that's why i've been on this brain science thing i mean to me, it's it's very important that I understand how my body works and that I give it the best of what... I wonder if she knows she's going out the wrong way. That I give it the best of everything that I need, that it needs. And so, that's one reason why I've started working out. Like, y'all sweated so hard. I played soccer in the front yard on Saturday, and it felt so good to sweat. I felt like... Every bit of stress and the chips and everything that I ate, I left out there in the yard. I had sweated it out. Fear will not allow you to think clearly. If you're not breathing, you're eating the fear and the stress. It's going to manifest in your body. And then you cannot apply the principle of priority, which says know the difference between what's urgent and, and important. And then number two, do what's important first, not what's urgent first. And I think that may be a hard thing for us to decipher sometimes. Like, Jojo, how do I know the difference between what's urgent and what's important? You have to look at, you have to decide that for yourself. You have to look at your own life. Like, for example, when my lights was getting cut off, it was urgent and it was important that I make that decision to keep my lights on, right? So that's important. It's important and it's urgent. What was urgent was that I find a job instant immediately because the one I had wasn't doing it but what was important was me taking the time to update my resume to make my urgent work for me it could be urgent that you get out of that relationship first hello somebody if there's an abuse please understand if you are being abused in an abusive relationship there's nothing I'm ever going to be able to tell you that's going to convince you to leave ever 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 there's nothing I'm going to be able to tell you that's going to convince you to leave. You've got to want to leave on your own. And then you have to do it when you feel safe to leave. If you don't feel safe to leave, you need... And people, this is just me. People say, always make a plan. I'm a firm. You know what? I agree. Make a plan to leave if you're in an abusive relationship. That did not work for me. 
because my abuser controlled everything my money my phone I didn't talk to my family for two years. I, I didn't even get to use the phone. I didn't get to use the computer. There were things I just, I read books. I snuck in read books when I, when I thought he was asleep. He kept the phones. I mean, the I didn't have access to anything to make a plan for anything. So for me, my for me to leave what became urgent was definitely life and death. But I had to take my opportunity when I saw it. I didn't have time to plan. So if you're in an abusive relationship... Please be careful, okay? When you're trying to when you're ready to make this decision, please be careful. Your life is at stake. Make no mistake about that. Your life is at stake. But you've got to decide, you gotta know the difference between what's urgent and what is important. I knew what was urgent was for me to live, right? What was important as well was for me to live. Sometimes what's urgent and important are both the same things. You got to move in safety. Think about that, day guys. What is urgent? What's the difference between what's a, so that's the principle of priority? Know the difference between what's urgent and what's important, and then part two to that is work on what's important first. Period. Because if it's urgent, it's going to get done. What's important needs to be done. I think we gotta look at the situation before you decide what's urgent and what's important. Like, you got to look at each individual. So, every example I'm going to give you is just going to apply to me. So, you're going to have to decide that for yourself. And that is where the first thought of the day comes in. Fear does not allow you to think clearly. If you're fearful or you're always in a state of stress or complaining or if you're always in a straight, in a state of direct opposition of where you need, of how you think you should be doing, then you're not thinking clearly. Have you ever said to yourself that was the stupidest decision jojo you ever made in your life like how did you make that decision because when you're in stress or when you're fearful or when you're upset you're not thinking clearly and you're not making the best decision so you always if you have a minute breathe take a deep breath because when you don't breathe your body your mind doesn't get the oxygen it needs to make the best um decision period that's why you get angry and say words you don't mean and then you can't take them back right that's why you may lash out at somebody in hurt and in anger because in that moment you didn't take time to breathe or to think it out when you're in fear and we can even add mad fear mad angry upset stressed you're not thinking clearly you're just not. And so if you're not thinking clearly, you can't apply the principle of priority, which is know the difference between what's urgent and important. And then number two, work on what's important first. Period. So think about that on this wonderful Monday morning. It's going to be an amazing day. What is urgent? What's the difference between what's urgent and important? And you've got to know that for yourself. Right, I like to. I'm a list person <clears throat> and I'm a writer, I can type it, but sometimes I like the old fashioned paper and pencil and I write it out what is urgent and what's important. And then when you see it on paper, it kind of puts it in perspective of what really is urgent and what really is important. So, think about that when you're in fear or you're in stress, you don't think clearly. And then you got to work the principles of priority. No difference between what's urgent and what's important. And stop arguing your limitations. Stop arguing for your limitations. So when you're in fear, you don't think clearly. You can't apply the priority principle. But then you begin to argue for your limitations. Meaning you begin to validate and justify why you can't do something which only feeds into your fear even more and it feeds into the I can'ts and the complaining even more. Some of us like to argue our limitations because if I can argue my limitations on why I can't do something, then I don't have to do it. Then it doesn't matter whether it's urgent or important because I'm not going to do it because I can't because I have argued my limitations so much that I believe them and I know them to be true in my heart and soul so I'm never going to get a better job you want to know why I'm never going to get a better job because I'm from and I'm from far city so I'm going to use I, I always use myself as an example okay I'm always going to use myself and I'm always going to think 
you know, what if. So, I'm just JoJo from Union Mills, Far City, North Carolina. I worked at McDonald's all through high school and after college. After that college, I had my daughter, and I went back home, and I was working at McDonald's. And I forced my, I argued my limitations down for everybody. I can't get a good paying job. Ain't nobody paying in Far City. Ain't nobody paying here, so I'm just going to have to work at McDonald's so I figure it out. At least I'm a manager, and I'm making a whopping $8.96 an hour, and I'm supporting me and a child with no help, period. But I, I can make it for eight ninety six, you know, because there's no jobs here, and I'm a single parent, and, you know, people just don't understand. It's hard out here being a single parent and being from Forest City working at McDonald's. And then I worked the 4 to 12 shift. So how am I going to find another job? Because I'm so tired I got to sleep when I get off work. And by the time I pick up Courtney, it's 1 in the morning. And then I got to wake up and take her to school. Well, then I got to come home and take a little nap before I get up again to pick her up from school, drop her off at the babysitter, and go to work. I argued my limitations to the end there was nowhere where you're going to find the space for me to take responsibility for me to change the outcome of my life i was determined you weren't gonna find that but guess what happened when i moved away even though i moved away under the most horrible circumstances when an abusive husband i found a better job i made more money and then the more money i made the more money i made the more money i made but when i started not forcing my limitations or stopped arguing my limitations on my life so that I wouldn't have to take responsibility for them, then the doors opened up. Some of us, are, we're very content to argue our limitations on our life. Because if I can argue my limitations on my life, then I don't have to do anything about my life. So fear doesn't allow you to think clearly, right? And then the principle of priority says know the difference between what's urgent and what's important. And then the uh, that's A or 1. And then 2 is act on what's important first. Make your list. Write it out. What's urgent and what's important. Because everything, when you're fearful and stressed out and don't know what to do, everything is urgent. All things are urgent and you're in a state, constant state of emergency. Been there, done that. Uh always in a constant state of emergency like you don't understand have you ever met somebody and every time you talk to them it's something all the time the lights off the water off the gas off they boyfriend ain't doing right they husband not doing right there's drama at the job and y'all know so if if you're just joining uh following the fitness morning show back last year year before last i used to do uh application wednesday where i'm an hr manager and I will talk about all the things in your job. So if you want to watch, go back. If you go to my Facebook page, they should all, they're all still there. And it was on Wednesdays and it was Application Wednesday where I gave you job tips and career tips. But have you know, have you ever been around somebody who every time they get a job, it's the, these people on these job crazy. Or these people don't even know. And they had a comp the same complaint about every job. Like, they won't let me off, and they know I need to do this, and I don't know why they ain't working right, and they ain't doing this. They have the same complaint for every job. Every job. Maybe they the common denominator because every job only has them in common, but they, don't, they ain't ready for that yet. Everything for them will be urgent. It will ne They are never going to know the difference between what's urgent and what's important. So, principle of priority says, one, know the difference between what's urgent and what's important. Okay? Principle of priority. I know I say it fast. The principle of priority say, one, know the difference between what's urgent and what's important. Two, work on what's important first. But if you are living in a constant state of fear and stress, you're not thinking clearly. Like you, like when I was living in fear and even after I left my abuser, in those days I had no idea how I was getting to work, how I was going to get home, had to borrow money for people I worked with. When you live in fear and stress, like you can make split decisions just like that. And it's a decision you have to make for that immediate situation because it's a crisis or it truly is urgent, but it is exhausting. Because your mind is always having to make snap decisions. Always. Well, Georgia, you ain't got no food. Well, you, you live in Raleigh, but you work, you know, at Durham. 
Well, you work at IBM. Well, now you work at Duke. Yes, that's further than IBM. How are you going to get to work? You don't have the gas money. Who going to pick up the kids? You're not going to get there in time. The traffic is bad. Constant, straight state of struggle, stress. And when you're in that and you start making those split decisions, your mind... <laughs> and you know what? This is crazy. I'm working this out right now. It, it'll reflect. It, it'll follow your jobs. Like I got so addicted to making split decisions. Your body gets used to the chemicals that you create. You know, with those split decisions, your body gets used to that, and then it it becomes addicted to it. Hello. That's why I tell people it's harder to come off a of, uh, stop complaining. It is to come off a of drug because when you're complaining, your body gets addicted to that chemical reaction that you produce. So it feeds off of it and it looks for it. Same thing with having to make decisions quickly. Godly, it has followed me throughout all my, my career. From IBM to Duke to um, I worked at a, a pharmaceutical company to a law firm. I finally ended up in the hospital where I at the hospital I had to think on my feet all day every day there was not a minute where you were not thinking on your feet to now I'm in a job where it doesn't require that and I almost lost my mind good lord look at this working it out for me hmm. and so all my jobs would seem to be in a constant state of urgent 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 I changed my job and that's why it was hard maybe that's why it was hard for me to adjust Hmm. Because the job I have now, I truly read all day in dead silence. Like it's it's whispering quiet. And when you whisper, everybody hears you anyway. Like if you bust out laughing, everybody's standing up like, who is that making noise? In the hospital, you yell and scream. And when it's quiet, everybody's running around like, what's the emergency? Because it's quiet. That's a good one. I learned something about myself today. How about that? Principle of priority. Know the difference between what's urgent and what's important. And you must, number two is you must do what's important. And fear does not allow you to think clearly. It allows you to make split decisions, you know, instantaneous decisions. But are you thinking further out to really make a decision? Or are you just making decisions in the moment? So think about that today on this wonderful Monday, marvelous Monday, motivational Monday. Think about that. Are you making, do you know the difference between what's urgent and is important? Write it out. I'm a, I'm a writer, so I like to write mine out all the time. So I need to see it in pen and paper so that I can see and then decide what really is urgent or am I making it urgent and what's really important. So think about that today, guys. I hope this has helped somebody. It helped me today. Helped me realize something. So, And the show is always for me anyway because I always learn something or I'm working something out for myself. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the show. Please make sure you share it because sharing is caring. If your friends and family do not have Facebook, send them over to the YouTube channel where they can binge watch all the Fearless Morning Shows. I will, I'm doing a book signing tour. If you want me to come to your city, please let me know. Um, I'm going to stop. First stop is Florida and that's July 27th. I will be in Florida and I will have more information for you, uh, later, uh, for the location for that. But if you want me to come to your city, please let me know. I'm definitely, I think I'm going to come back to Raleigh because Raleigh is where it all started for me. So, but I know had I not left Raleigh, I never would have written the books. I wouldn't have been in the movies. I, I have been in two movies. Um, I've been on a couple of TV shows, written three books so far. I would have never done any of that had I stayed. Ma'am, you're going to hit my car. Had I stayed where I was. Sometimes fear does not allow you to think clearly. So take a minute to breathe, okay? Take a minute to breathe today. Take a deep breath. Even if you only have like a minute or two, take a deep breath. Like take it in and hold it and then control how you let it out. Relax your brain a little bit. Give it something to work with. And you think, I, because I always say, you can't think clearly. I can't, oh, yeah, I sure will, Catherine. Raleigh is definitely on my list. Um, if you say, I can't think clearly, I got so much on my mind. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to think. That, my friend, is the time you, I go to the bathroom. Like, if I'm at work and things are frustrating me or people have frustrated me or I'm frustrated about the, the things that's going on in my life, 
I legit go to the bathroom and I just stay in there. If there's people in there, I go in the stall and I just take a deep breath and I hold it and I breathe it. And I do it for a count of three or five until I feel myself calm, get my mindset to calm down. So you got to breathe. If you want me to come to your city for, um, for a book tour, please let me know so that I can put it on the schedule. Um, or if you want to host a Fearless Morning Show where you are, I, I may be open to doing that as well. But you guys let me know. Uh, send me a message and I will um, add it to my list. All right, guys. I hope you have an amazing Monday. And I will see you here bright and early tomorrow morning. Have a good one.